Hi friends, how are you? Hope you all are doing good. In this video, we are going to discuss on the topic external commercial borrowing. This video is the continuation of Vlog 5 that is resource mobilization through issue of deposit receipt. Don't skip this video, watch till end. This is CS Mithun Vishnoi, you are watching MIBS Gurugul. Finance is the lifeblood of the business. Requirement of fund will be depending upon nature and size of the company. Fund raised will be utilized for various purposes like expansion, modernization, acquisition of business, etc. Fund raised will have proper balance of equity and debt. Indian company raises a fund not only from domestic market but also from international market. If Indian company raises from international market, it can do so in debt format that is through external commercial borrowing. In short, it is called ECB. In this video, we will discuss about the concept ECB and legal and regulatory framework governing ECB. Let's see. The concept ECB has got great relevance due to limitations of a debt market. Now, let us understand what is an ECB. ECB means it is a borrowing received by eligible borrower from a registered non-resident lender used for commercial purposes received in foreign currency subject to various conditions like all-in cost ceiling, permitted and non-permitted end users, minimum average maturity period. Now let us discuss this concept in detail. ECB means it is a borrowing. Borrowing means it is a debt. Anything which is received with promise to repay back along with interest. Availed of by eligible borrower eligible borrower means borrower who is eligible to receive loan from non-resident lender granted by registered non-resident lender registered non-resident lender means lender who is eligible to grant loan to the borrower and this borrowing must be used only for commercial purpose that means it should be used only for business purpose Say, individual shall not eligible to avail this ECB because they are prohibited. Because they are using it for personal purpose. Fifth one, it is availed in a foreign currency. That is in US dollar, UK pound, etc. Now, let us discuss different types of ECB. One is bank loan. Bank loan means loan which is availed of from international banker. Second one, bond or debenture, like non-convertible debenture, optionally convertible debentures, etc. Third one, securitized debt instrument. Securitized debt instrument means it is a debt instrument issued against stressed asset or mortgage asset. Fourth one, buyer's credit or supplier's credit. Buyer's credit or supplier's credit means buyers or supplier will grant certain credit to their client. Fifth one, financial lease. And last, FCCB and FCEB. FCCB means foreign currency convertible bond. FCEB means foreign currency exchangeable bond. FCCB, foreign currency convertible bond means it is a bond or debt instrument issued in a foreign currency and principal and interest repayment is in a foreign currency. At the time of maturity, issuer of a debt instrument will convert this into equity share of issued company whereas in the case of a foreign currency exchangeable bond or FCEB it is a similar to FCCB but at the time of maturity issuer will convert this debt instrument into equity share of offered company I will tell you one example Tata Motors issued FCEB and at the time of maturity Tata Motors will convert this debt instrument into equity share of Tata chemicals here Tata Chemicals is an offered company. Now let us discuss advantages of ECB. One is ECB is availed of in a foreign currency. I will tell you one example. If a company imported certain machinery from abroad, its payment has to be made in a foreign currency. Normally company what they will do is they will convert their fund into foreign currency. Apart from that, if company availed ECB from abroad, then such payment can be set off against ECB. 
Second advantage, interest rate is comparatively lower. If you take bank loan, its interest rate will come to around 8 to 10 percentage. But compared to that, if you avail ECB, interest rate will be much lower, say uh, 2 to 3 percentage. So interest rate will be much cheaper. Third advantage is investors base can be increased. Suppose if a company raises fund by issue of a bond or debenture in the international market, investors will invest in the company. Through this, investors base can be increased. Fourth advantage is company will get bulk foreign currency fund for their expansion, modernization and acquisition of business. Fifth advantage is a flexibility in terms of security for ECB. Suppose if you take bank loan from banks in India, banker will ask for security. Normally security will be in tune to bank loan. If you avail 100 crore worth bank loan, they will ask for 100 crore worth of security. Whereas in the case of ECB, there will be flexibility in terms of security. Sixth advantage is flexibility in terms of lending period. Compared to our banker in India, ECB lender will provide flexibility in terms of lending period, say minimum average maturity period of 3 years. Now let us discuss disadvantages of ECB. We have one disadvantage that is the foreign currency exchange risk. Suppose if a company raises ECB at a rate of $1 is equal to 70 rupees and one year down the line company will have to repay such ECB. At that point of time, if $1 is equal to 75 rupee, company has to pay 5 rupee extra for repayment of such ECB. Normally, company will hedge their foreign currency exposure. If company has not hedged their foreign currency exposure, then foreign currency fluctuation risk has to be faced. Now, let us discuss legal and regulatory framework governing ECB. We have section 6 subsection 3D of a FEMA 199 deals with external commercial borrowing. This section has to be read along with a master direction which is master direction on ECB trade credit and structured obligation data March 26, 2019. RBI issues such direction based on section 11 of FEMA 199. This direction supersedes earlier direction which is issued in the year 2016. Now we are going to discuss on the concept available route for raising ECB. We have two route that is one is automatic route and second one is approval route. Under automatic route the cases of ECB will be examined by AD category 1 banker. AD category 1 banker means banker who is designated by ECB borrower for uh, uh, reporting requirement under FEMA guidelines including availing LRN from RBI, monitoring ECB transactions, etc. On the other hand, we have approval route. Under approval route, prospective borrower has to seek approval from RBI before seeking ECB from lender. Now, let us discuss framework for raising ECB. We had three track in 2016 master direction. Track 1 deals with foreign currency denominated ECB with minimum average maturity period of 3 or 5 years. Track 2 deals with foreign currency denominated ECB with minimum average maturity period of 10 years. Track 3 deals with Indian rupee denominated ECB with minimum average maturity period of 3 or 5 years. Now, in current master direction, track 1 and track 2 is subsumed in foreign currency denominated ECB whereas track 3 is merged with Indian rupee denominated ECB. So we have two types of ECB one is foreign currency denominated ECB and second one is Indian rupee denominated ECB. Indian rupee denominated ECB includes masala bond. So now let us discuss what is a masala bond. Masala bond is nothing but it is a bond issued by Indian company in the international market in Indian rupee and principal and interest repayment is made in a Indian rupee. Kerala government had issued masala bond one year back. This is for your information. In this video, we discuss about basics of the term ECB and legal and regulatory framework governing ECB. Discussion on this concept will be continued in my next video which will be published soon. I hope you understood this concept. I will be coming out with various videos soon. 
please subscribe to my channel if not subscribe and click on bell button so that my video will come as notification please comment on my video and share among your friends be happy be positive thank you